Now are you guys ready to get started? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about how to grow your business while you are busy with client work. My name is Nathan Ingram. I am from Birmingham, Alabama, just a couple of hours over. Uh, Atlanta is my second WordCamp home. I've been an organizer for WordCamp Birmingham for several years now. Uh, WP Y'all, we have the best hashtag ever, right? Also, WPYall.com. Uh, the website is up. We're going to be the second weekend of August if any of you guys want to drive over to Birmingham. It's a great camp. A lot smaller than this, but I think the content is excellent. Uh, so I am the host at iThemes Training. We do WordPress education there, have for many years. I tell people it's like being at WordCamp all year long. Virtually everything we do is free. We do two or three live webinars a week that are just like the WordCamp talks. Matter of fact, uh, I did 19 WordCamps last year, and one of the things I did was cherry pick the best speakers from the WordCamps across the country and bring them on to do live webinars webinars on iThemes training. So uh, check us out there at training.ithemes.com. I'm also an ambassador for the Liquid Web Partner Program. Both iThemes and Liquid Web make it possible for me to be here. Uh, I am a web business owner, have been since 1995. I've been building websites since the internet just first started to walk upright. Uh, that's when I built and sold my first project way back then. And for a little over five years now, I've been a business coach for WordPress freelancers. Uh, it's, a, it's a passion of mine. Actually, my first coaching client is sitting right there, Mr. Dave Braun. Uh, good to have him over here. So, I uh, mentioned the book. Yes, so let's do this. When it comes to productivity, I am an expert, at least by the definition of Dr. Niels Bohr, who said, an expert is a person who has, by his own painful experience, found out all the mistakes that one can make in a very narrow field. So by that definition, I'm absolutely an expert. Uh, it's funny, this talk I actually gave last weekend at WordCamp Orange County as well. And this issue right here of productivity has been the one that has kicked my butt for the first quarter of this year. I think it's ironic that I'm giving this talk twice within a week. Uh, so I, I'm, you know, I share that with you to say, look, this is a struggle. It's a real struggle. How many of you struggle being productive in your business? Uh, so we come to WordCamps and we learn some great things and here's what I have to tell you. You are not alone. How many of you work with clients? That is your thing. You're doing something word with WordPress and clients. Excellent. So how many of you uh, have it all together? <laughs> One person, yes. Michelle, you should get to know Michelle in the back. She's got a talk later called How to Have It All Together in Your WordPress Business. Um, <laughs> So here's the challenge. When you come to a group like this and you meet a lot of great people, they all seem like they're doing great. They have this great persona that they're exhibiting. And you look at them and you think, they don't have the problems I have. They don't deal with problem clients. They don't struggle with revenue that does like this. They don't struggle with being productive personally. They've got everything together. And what I've learned is that that is garbage. We all face the same challenges. In five years of coaching freelancers, hundreds of conversations with freelancers, mailing and female across the United States and Canada, around the world, I have discovered that there are no unique issues, or at least very few unique issues. Now the details may be a little different, but the core issues are the same. Many people in the WordPress space are one more bad client away from calling it quits. They are one more bad month away from throwing in the towel. And it's a shame because most of these frustrations are fixable by good systems and processes, including some of the personal productivity habits that I'm going to talk about today. By the way, if you are struggling, if you've come to this WordCamp and in a room that, with this many people in it, chances are there are at least a few of you who've come to this WordCamp as a lifeline. And you're thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue this. I don't know. I'm, I'm tired of the struggles with clients. I'm tired of the revenue going up and down. I'm tired of all these things. Listen, I say this very, very sincerely. I am here for you this weekend. I come to these word camps to spend time with you to help you fix these problems because I am a passionate advocate of owning your own business, being in control of your own destiny, and using the wonderful tool of WordPress to empower whatever the priorities you have set for your life. Okay? Now, iThemes has made that possible and Liquid Web has made that possible. So thank them. Uh, iThemes is a Liquid Web company. Liquid Web has a booth out there. Uh, we're a global sponsor this year. They've made it possible for me to be here with you. So I'm dead serious when I say this. Find me and let's talk. Just walk up and say hi. And let's talk about the challenges that you're facing in your business. And maybe I can help. I'm here for you. Okay? All right. So 
Here's what we're going to talk about today in the next oh, 35 minutes or so. The common struggle that we all face when it comes to productivity. Then we're going to spend some time understanding that problem a bit and developing a strategy to deal with that issue. And last of all, just a few suggestions from my own personal experience and failure of trying to do this myself, okay? So by the way, uh, if you are taking pictures of slides, you're welcome to do that. Or you can just go to this link, nathaningram.com slash WCATL. That's the hashtag for this event. You can download all the slides as well as the tool. This is very important if for no other reason that I'm going to give you a tool in the middle of this to help with your productivity. It's a download. It's free. It's at that link, okay? So you can go there. Also, Liquid Web has made it possible for me to give away two free one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to anybody that signs up for free as a Liquid Web partner. You can find out more about that at the table. So if I can help you one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to pay for that. That's pretty awesome, right? Okay, so let's talk about the common struggle. One of the issues that everybody who does any kind of business experiences is the struggle between strategy and execution. Now, the execution are the things we do. The strategy is the why and how we do it. There's a lot of talks this weekend at WordCamp about the execution. You got to know the SEO techniques, right? You got to know the PHP and JavaScript. You got to know the plugins and all of those things. You got to know this. But here's what I've discovered. A lot of people who go into WordPress as a freelancer, and those of you who are freelancers here, see if this sounds like you. You go into business as a freelancer, you love to do the WordPress thing, you love to build websites for clients, you get all nerded out in the tech, and that's awesome. And then about a year in, you realize, oh my gosh, I have a business now. And there's a whole other set of problems. Not only do you have to know the tech, you gotta know the strategy. You gotta know the why behind the what, right? And so we hit a wall. It's predictable. 18 months, roughly, in just about every freelance life. How many of you hit that wall? You've been a freelancer, you hit that wall. Yeah, me too. So I want to spend some time in the first part of this talk putting some terminology to a struggle that I believe everybody in business of really any kind, especially freelancers, faces. Uh, so both of these things are critical, execution and strategy. Now, here's the thing. We all understand, I mean, you're reasonably intelligent people. Like Chris said earlier, you're either insane or you're awesome for being here at a tech conference on a Saturday. We understand the need for strategy. We understand that we need to be more efficient, more productive, more profitable. We get that. We understand how those things connect. But it's the doing of the strategy, the actually executing of the strategy on a weekly basis that gets messy, right? It gets tough. That's why we go to a conference, we pick up great ideas, and we do nothing with them. Because we got stuff going on, right? So how many of you, this is what, I keep pointing to there as though there's slides here. How many of you, this is what your strategy looks like? You are steadily improving over time. Steadily improving. Mark is steadily improving. <laughs> Y'all can go to his talk later called Steadily Improving. <laughs> or does your productivity world look more like something similar to this? Yes, right? So we do okay, and then we backtrack, and we go around, and we get caught in the twists and turns. For many of us, we just get busy. We get distracted. We get distracted by old habits, and we're backtracking, and we're back to where we started. Why is it so hard to keep strategy in focus? I mean, you read a great book. You, you read a great blog post. You come to a word camp. You listen to a webinar. You find some amazing things that you know you need to learn, that you know you need to do, things you know you need to put in, to install into your business. How many of you this morning have learned something in business or some tech thing that you know you need to do next week? How many of you are going to do it? Right, okay. So... We have a list of changes that we need to make, usually, that never seems to get shorter. A list of things to accomplish that's always getting longer. So what are you going to do with all the cool stuff that you learn this weekend at WordCamp? What happens when you get home? We tend never to put it into practice, but why is that? It's not that you didn't have good intentions. It's not that the presenter wasn't awesome. It's not that the author of the book wasn't awesome. It's that you, you start thinking about putting them into practice, and then life gets in the way, right? You get to your desk and there's 15 emails from clients. The phone rings. You have family stuff that goes along. Three months later, no change whatsoever. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, me too. So I want to put a word around this concept, and it is whirlwind. 
the whirlwind. The whirlwind is the thing that keeps us from getting strategy done. Now let's spend a little bit of time understanding this concept of whirlwind. We need to know what we're up against. We need to know our enemy. What is the whirlwind? Now the working definition we're going to use here is that the whirlwind is the energy and attention needed to run your business. The whirlwind is the urgent. The whirlwind is the 14 emails from clients that are waiting on you when you get into your office in the morning, all with demands things for things that have to be done by noon. You been there? It's the customer call that happens right when you were just about to work on your own website for a change. It's the one hour meeting with a client that stretches into three and takes up the rest of your afternoon. Does this sound familiar? Okay. You come to your desk with the best of intentions. It's going to be a day where I finally get to work on my stuff, finally get some strategy accomplished, and it lasts about 10 minutes because the whirlwind showed up. Now I've spent hours and hours in seminars and webinars and all these things, and I've filled my brain with things that need to be done but never get done because I let the whirlwind get in the way. Now here's the problem. The goals and the strategy are important. We understand that. But the whirlwind is the urgent. And there's a, an astute statement that the Franklin Covey Corporation made. If you guys know of Franklin Covey, all the old timers remember the Franklin Day Planner. Anybody use that? And then this is Stephen Covey of the Habits of Highly Affected People. Franklin Covey Co uh, Company says, when urgency and importance clash, urgency wins every time. Every time, right? And it does, doesn't it? Every single time because it's urgent or <laughs> perceived to be urgent. That's a whole other talk. Urgency wins every time. So when it comes to our own strategy and goals, what do we say? I'll do it later, later tomorrow, next week, next quarter. Here's the problem. Delaying strategy doesn't work. Because when you say, I'll do it tomorrow, guess what's waiting on you tomorrow? The whirlwind. When you say, oh, we'll, we'll get to that next week, what happens? What's waiting on you next week? The whirlwind, exactly. And we never seem to learn that lesson. Now, before you get the wrong idea about the whirlwind, the whirlwind isn't bad. Okay, the whirlwind is not bad. It just is what it is. The whirlwind is your business. It's your work. If you don't have the whirlwind, you'd have nothing to be strategic about. Okay, so it's not bad. It just is what it is. It's a fact of life. You've got to realize this and take this concept of whirlwind into account while you're trying to grow your business. We have to accept it and figure out some sort of strategy to move our businesses forward, recognizing the reality of the whirlwind. Are you with me? Okay. So let's talk about taming the whirlwind. How do you get the whirlwind under control? You need a plan. You've got to have a plan. If you're a freelancer, if you're a web business owner, I'm going to take it for granted that you're a smart person. If you're here on a Saturday at a tech conference, I'm going to take it for granted that you understand the concepts and you have some reasonable level of discipline. The challenge is not accomplishing goals. The challenge is how do I accomplish my goals in the middle of the whirlwind? Because without a plan, the whirlwind always wins. It just does. Without a plan, the whirlwind wins every time. Why? Because urgency wins every time. And you've seen that happen, right? Over and over, week after week. I go into the week with the greatest of intentions, the whirlwind kicks my butt, and I have nothing done strategically by the end of the week. Okay, I told you there were no unique issues, right? How many of you face exact, exactly that? Okay. So here's the plan. Three parts. It's easy to follow. It's easy to understand. It's harder to follow. Okay, you're going to start with an initial planning meeting with your own self. We're going to follow that up with some weekly planning and then weekly execution. That's it. One first meeting, a weekly planning meeting, and a weekly execution. This works whether you're on a team or whether you are a solopreneur. It works whether you own your own business or if you're an employee. This works all the way around. You're going to start with an initial planning meeting that is two hours unplugged. Now. <laughs> Let me emphasize the fact, unplugged. And I realize that's weird at a tech conference, OK? Matter of fact, the downloads I give you, I used to make those a fillable PDF. 
And I stopped doing that, and I'll explain why in a little while. You need to be completely unplugged. You need to turn off the screens, because this is what I learned after lots of years of doing this wrong. You know where the whirlwind lives? On the screen. Phone, email, Slack, Twitter, you name it, right? We have 1,800 points of access into our life that we let things into. So my suggestion is for this first initial planning meeting with yourself, turn off screens, turn off your phone, go to some place where you can easily concentrate. Now for some of you that may be a stimulating environment like a coffee shop or somewhere where there's stuff going on. Or you may be the kind of person where you need to be alone, isolated, you know, sitting on your deck and everything's quiet or somewhere, like at a library or whatever. Go somewhere that you do not work. Don't try to do this in the office space where you normally work. Go somewhere else. It's amazing what that little shift does to your mind. Get a notebook and a pen, or if you're afraid of commitment, a pencil, and you're going to do some things. <laughs> Take some time to let the whirlwind calm down in your mind. That's a critical. And you've got to schedule this. The scheduling of it and the actual having the meeting with yourself is, as I've coached people through this process, one of the hardest things, and, you, and I, I promise you, you have to put this on the calendar with an alert or two to remind you to do this, because otherwise, the client work comes up, the client work comes up. And if you've planned, I'm going to do this on Friday afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m. I'm going to have this meeting with myself, and a client calls and says, I need to meet with you Friday afternoon. You can't, because you already have a meeting scheduled with your most important client, yourself. Okay? It's got to be scheduled. So here's what you're going to do. Two hours, two tasks. You got it? Two hours, two tasks. Task number one is you're going to identify the issues. Task number two, you're going to plan some action items. Here's how this works. First thing you're going to do in this two-hour meeting is identify some issues. You need to ask yourself a very difficult question. What are the changes that I need to make today to improve my business? What are some things I need to improve today to improve my business? What are the things that bring the most immediate impact? Now this is critical to the process. Immediate impact is important because anytime you're establishing new habits, you need to have little wins that build momentum. How many of you have learned that? Since December, I dropped 80 pounds. And I've learned that process, that process was the result of little small changes, micro habits that I could continue to repeat every day. Okay? And this is the same way. You've got to do some, make some changes that are going to bring immediate impact to your business because the, the momentum that you get from small changes is whirlwind repellent. It keeps the whirlwind away, at least in your mind. Now, the other thing I'll tell you is this. The changes that you need to make that are going to bring the most immediate impact, you ready for this? are probably not things you're going to enjoy doing. Because you would have done them already. Right? So pick, pick, you're going to pick the top three. Prioritize them. What are the things I need to do today that are going to bring the most immediate impact to my business? Be honest with yourself and pick the top three. The three most important things. Now, the second thing you do in that planning meeting is some action items. You're going to look at those three items, the three things you need to do today to bring immediate impact to your business. You're going to break those things down into action items that are going to take you two to four hours to complete. There's a reason for that. I'll get to it in a minute. You got it? Two hour meeting. Two tasks. Task number one, pick out your top three issues. Task number two, break those issues down into two to four hour action items. Are you with me? Everybody together. You got it so far? This is not hard to understand. It's hard to do. Here's a tool. And we're going to try to swap to a different screen and see this. Uh, again, you can download this tool at nathaningram.com slash WCATL. The hashtag for this event, you'll find the download for these slides and the tool there. And did this just work? No, it did not. OK, let's try this again. Let's go out. Look at that. Awesome. OK, so this is a, a very simple little worksheet uh, that I use in my coaching program, which is called Advance. And how many of you have heard the term SMART goals? SMART goals, right? So SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, or actionable, depending on who you listen to, relevant, and time bound. Without all five of those pieces, it's not really a goal. It's not a good goal. It's not a smart goal for sure. So this first page here is, this is the printable. I'm going to skip down for our purposes to the next one, which is an example. So you can't see that at all. Uh, let's zoom in. All right. 
So in this example, uh, our hypothetical person who is filling out this uh, particular worksheet realizes that I need to have recurring revenue in my business to be stable. How many of you have learned that hard lesson? I talked about that, I think, last year here. You got to have recurring revenue. It starts with a WordPress maintenance plan uh, centered around a great host. And it also includes other things, like, for example, a social media service. So here is the specific part of this goal. I need to create a social media services uh, service to create and manage social properties and content for my clients. That's specific. It's answering the question, what do I really want to accomplish? And you're answering questions like who, what, when, where, and how. It's the details of the goal. That goes in that first box. Then we're going to move into the measurable piece. How do I know I'm making progress? You think about how much and how many. Well, I'm going to start with Facebook, then maybe consider adding interest, uh, Instagram and Pinterest. And then we're going to move to the attainable piece. Is this a goal I can actually achieve? Sometimes your goal is so abstract, it's not ever something you could take action on. All right? So it needs to be actionable, attainable. So at this point, you're, you know, maybe some next steps or what are the obstacles in the way? It's attainable, but I need to understand Facebook ads. I need to develop a template for social marketing. I need to figure out a good platform for management. All right, then we move into the relevancy piece. This is critical. This is the piece of the goal that most people leave out, and it's why, in my opinion, many goals fail because you fail to connect the goal to real life and say why it's important. Why is this goal important? How does it fit into the rest of my business and life? I am doing this so that what? I'm doing this social media service because I need to offer more than just website creation services. And adding a social media management service is key to building that recurring revenue that's going to stabilize the rest of my world. That's why it's important. Now, the relevancy is important because when the whirlwind starts to spin, this is where you remind yourself, I, am, I have to do this so that I can get this thing out and build recurring revenue. Are you with me? OK. And last of all, time bound. When will this goal be completed? Because a goal without a deadline is just an idea. So put a date on it. I'll have it ready by April the 30th. Now, that's typical SMART goal, right? We've, if you've seen SMART goals, this is very typical. Now, I've taken it one step further, because over here in the right-hand column, I like to phrase my goals in terms of a declaration. It's like taking your goal and saying, I will. I will do this. And I've given you a little formula. I will, some combination of the stuff in specific and measurable, buy the time-bound piece because, or so that, the relevancy piece. Here's what this looks like for a uh, phrase of the SMART goal. I will create a social media management service for my clients using Facebook by March the 31st because it's a key to building recurring revenue in my business. Does that make sense? That's a good goal. It's measurable, it's time bound, and you know what I'm gonna do with that? I'm gonna print that thing out in a 112 point font and put it right in front of me on my wall. I will because this other thing is important to me. And as I sit down at my desk every day and the whirlwind is, I'm being tempted by the whirlwind to get distracted doing some other things, I know I've got this time, I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. And it's important because I have to build that recurring revenue. Does that make sense? All right. Now the next thing I'm going to, this is uh, the goal generator. I'm suggesting that in that initial planning meeting with yourself, you fill out three of these. You pick your top three things you know you need to change, and you phrase them in terms of a smart goal. Can you do that? If you'll do this, you'll move forward. I promise you. I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm just saying it, it is a way that I've coached people through over the last several years, and it totally works. Three items, three goal generators. Now, the other thing I told you to do was plan action items, two to four hour action items. And there's a second page of the packet you can download that's the goal manager that lets you flesh these things out. So you state your goal, here's some spaces. Uh, I'm going to move on just for the sake of time. But down here at the bottom is where you can write in action items that are going to take you two to four hours to complete. You got it? So in that first meeting with yourself, use these worksheets, print them out. If you find a better way, fine, use it. It's not about the worksheets. This is just boxes on a page, right? But you want to have three things you need to do and some action items broken down. That's the big picture. Everybody can do that. Now, let's get back into this. One of the twists where people fall off 
in this model is we have the first meeting, we get our goals set, and I never do anything else. Just like always. Never do it. It was a great idea. I got some stuff on paper. Nothing ever changes. You must, you must, you must, before you start your week, plan your week. How many of you plan your week before it starts? Awesome. So, whenever that happens, for me, it's usually Friday afternoons. Usually, clients don't call on Friday afternoons. They're thinking about their weekend, too. And Friday afternoons, generally speaking, is when I stop and I plan the week ahead and I do some strategy work. I'm going to give you a little some, a format for this in a minute. But whenever it is, maybe it's Sunday evenings for you. Maybe it's early Monday mornings. The point is, before you hit your chair on Monday morning, make sure the week is planned out. Because guess what happens as soon as you hit your chair on Monday morning? The whirlwind is waiting on you, right? You turn on, you know, bing, 15 emails, bing, two texts. I hope you're not letting your clients text you. That's a, whole other, that's a whole other talk. We know we have to do this because without a plan, the whirlwind always wins. Because the whirlwind is waiting on you to open your email on Monday morning to totally wipe out uh, your plan if you don't have one. Okay, so that weekly planning takes usually a half an hour. It's not hard. You get better at it as you go. And during this weekly planning, what you're going to do is take one of those action items, one of those two to four hour action items, and you're going to look at your calendar and you are going to schedule time that week to get it done. So let's just say you've learned something cool at WordCamp this, this weekend. And you know, hey, I need to do this in the next, you know, four weeks. And you can break it down into four simple two to four hour things that you can do. And over that time, you'll have the thing done. And before the week starts, you're going to plan, okay, you know what, this week, let's see how things look, the appointments here and there. Wednesday afternoon, I can schedule three hours to do this thing. So I'm going to put that on the calendar. It's an appointment. If a client calls and wants to talk or meet with me on Wednesday afternoon, I'm not available. You wouldn't cancel another client appointment to meet with a different client. No, you are your most important client. So it's scheduled, it's on the calendar with a reminder, and you stop, you have to stop what you're doing and actually do the thing. It's got to be on the calendar. So plan that time to execute at least one action. If you can do more, schedule more. Maybe it's a light week. So maybe you can do more strategy. But just schedule it. Now here's the way, in a, in a very oversimplified manner, this is the way I look at my week. I break down my week, every day of the week, into three blocks. There's a morning, an afternoon, and an evening. Brilliant, right? Okay, brilliant. Uh, so my family gets one. The highest priority for me in this world is my family. It's the most important thing. My family always gets one piece of my day. So if I'm on a deadline and I have to work morning, afternoon, evening, guess what? My family gets paid back one block. You know, so if I'm working late one day, maybe I take half a day off later that week to pay my family back. I look at it in a big picture, this is how I'm going to block out my time. Here's like a typical oversimplified week with the whirlwind concept. So Mondays, the whirlwind lives on Mondays. How many of you figured that out? 88 support tickets came in this weekend. So Monday, you know, in this week, hey, we're going to, we're going to spend all day long just deal, dealing with whirlwind stuff, dealing with client requests, whatever. It gets, and Monday night, I'm with my family. Tuesday, hey, we got a project we're working on. We're building a website for a client, and I'm going to spend Tuesday afternoon working on that project. If I'm in a project block, everything gets turned off. Email gets turned off. My phone gets turned off. I'm not reachable during that time because I'm head down doing stuff for the client. Have you discovered that if you leave your email on and you're trying to focus on client work, what happens whenever you get that alert for a new email notification? We are like Pavlov's dogs. The email, ding, I got to look at that. We have multiple monitors. We're looking all over the place. Or, oops, Slack, something has happened in Slack. We have to stop the world because something has happened in Slack, right? Turn all that stuff off. Your client, I mean, unless the server goes down, which is, come on rare, right? Your client can wait two to four hours or whatever it is. So block the time out. I'm working on a project that day. Same for Wednesday. Again, my family's getting eve nights. So uh, this doesn't happen nearly as much as, as it used to, but when my kids were smaller, uh, we homeschool, and so a lot of times we'll go and do stuff as a family during the day. Maybe I'm taking Thursday morning and we're going to some museum or some whatever with the homeschool group. I'm going to take that time to be with my kids. It's awesome, but I'm working that night. 
My family gets one block. See how that works? Now, this is dramatically oversimplified, but for the purposes of illustration, there you go. Now, Friday, look at Friday. There's a strategy block. It's red, Friday afternoon. Nothing gets scheduled Friday afternoon because that's the time when I am doing strategy for my business. That's the time when I'm going to execute on a two to four hour action item, one or more of those things. And nothing gets scheduled during that time. This is not hard to understand, is it? It's hard to do. It's hard to make yourself do it. That's the hard part. So, notice that the whirlwind can be contained. It can be contained if you'll just put some good productivity habits in place. Now, Adam, right here, Adam, with the hat. Adam is giving a talk tomorrow you guys should totally go to on productivity, where he's going to talk about the more internal, personal side. Is that right? So make sure you look at Adam's talk. When is it tomorrow? 10 a.m. right here. 10 a.m. in this room uh, on tomorrow. So come back and hear that. So just using some good techniques of time blocking, again, oversimplified look at that, but it's there. Scheduling your phone and email time. How many of you, when your client calls, no matter what you're doing, you stop and pick up the phone? And we call it, we pat ourselves on the back. It's great customer service. It's terrible productivity habits. Terrible product. Or if the client sends you an email, you reply right back, no matter what else is going on. We pat ourselves on the back. Wonderful customer service, when in fact, you have trained your client by that habit of expecting a reply from you immediately. That is not sustainable as you grow. It's not sustainable. I've even gotten to where if a client, if I happen to be doing email and an email comes in, I will actually delay the sending of that email uh, and, and pause the send for a few hours sometimes. Hope my clients aren't watching this video. <laughs> Just thought about that. Um, Anyhow, so, use a ticket yes, use, uh, t totally. If you're trying to run client support out of your inbox, stop it today. That's a whole other talk. But yeah, get, get those things out of your inbox so you can focus on what matters. All right, so in the weekly execution time, this is that red time I just showed you on that illustration. Two to four hours, schedule a time, don't compromise it. Maybe for a real emergency, and it needs to be a real emergency. A client needing something done is not usually a real emergency. A client who needs an image changed on their website can wait till tomorrow morning. Don't break your schedule. You are more important than any of your clients. If a client calls and you're trying to do strategy time, don't stop doing what you're doing and pick up the phone. If you were meeting with another client and another client called you, would you walk away from your client meeting and take a call from another client? That's insane. So don't do it when you're dealing with your most important client, which is yourself. Don't compromise the time. All right, now, initial planning meeting, two hours, two tasks. Identify the issues and break them down into action items. Each week we're going to plan time to execute each one of those action items and then actually get it done. Now, roughly every quarter, you should have probably executed on those three items. And so roughly every quarter-ish, repeat the process. Sit down with yourself again. Make a list of all the things that need to be done in your business. Or look at what you had from before. Make sure the priorities still fall in line and pick three more things. You repeat that. every. There's a great book, by the way, called 12 Week Year. If you haven't read that, highly recommend it. It kind of gets into a quarterly planning process like this. You repeat it every quarter. It, it is a simple process to understand. It's harder to execute, but you simply have to say, no, I'm not going to let my life be ruled by the whirlwind. I'm going to put some control around it, and you can actually start to move your business forward. So let's, uh, let's wrap up with a few practical suggestions. The first, and this is from all of my failures, okay? This is where I've screwed things up. You gotta prioritize. Be brutally honest. And this is where it's helpful to have a business coach or someone, as Chris uh, said earlier this morning, someone who's okay with calling you stupid to your face. Uh, you gotta have some of those friendships in your life. Uh, and if it's somebody else in the WordPress space or the web space who understands the challenges that we go through, having somebody like that that you were that transparent with that can call and, and let them bounce off your priorities a little bit, you got to prioritize because you will always have more goals than you have time. You'll always have more goals than you have time. That's why you have to focus on the things that build momentum. What do you really, really need to do? Because, like I said, there's a psychology to this. 
Do the things that bring immediate impact to build momentum, because that's going to pay off. Uh, Franklin Covey Company, again, uh, had this statistic. And I'm sorry for those of you over here. The statistic was, if the number of goals you try to accomplish in addition to the chaos of the whirlwind, if you have two to three goals to accomplish in addition to the whirlwind, you'll accomplish two to three goals. If you try to accomplish four to ten goals in addition to the whirlwind, you'll accomplish one or two goals. If you try to accomplish 11 to 20, first of all, you're an insane and you'll accomplish nothing. There's only so much time. You've got to focus on the things that bring immediate impact, which means sometimes good ideas have to be put on the shelf. That also means that you got to really, you got to look at how you're spending your time and what you're doing. Because I don't know about you, but I understand that many people in the web space will allow a whole morning to go by tinkering with some fancy new tool they found on the web instead of doing what really matters for their business. Now, I'm, not, I'm sure none of you have that problem, but I do sometimes because we're geeks, right? I mean, we, that's, we enjoy this stuff. Sometimes good ideas need to be put on a shelf. They're there. They're on the list. We'll get back to them. But for now, it's not what's going to bring impact to my business. Does that make sense? I've wasted a lot of time tinkering with stuff that really didn't move the yardsticks. Okay, second suggestion for my failures is this. You've got to separate your roles. Particularly if you're a freelancer, small business owner, agency owner, wh whoever you are, you are both a CEO and an employee. And you have to wear different hats. How many of you wear multiple hats in your business? Oh, yes. All right. So this is the way I've learned to think about it. When I am doing the strategy, I am the CEO of my company. When I'm the one sitting at the desk executing the strategy, I'm an employee. Now, it's a subtle mental change that does this for me. And I may be insane. Maybe this doesn't work for you. Maybe it does. But if I think of myself that way, I have a tendency, while in the moment, to decide, I really don't want to do this today. I don't know about you. I would really rather not be doing this strategy piece. I would rather be doing something else. But no, no, no. My role sitting in that chair is an employee who has to execute the plan the CEO set last week. Does that help? The things that we do for strategy for our business are oftentimes incredibly difficult. And it is easier, hear this, it's easier to do client work than it is to do sometimes the soul-searching, gut-wrenching strategy that our business requires. So when you as the CEO get a change of venue, a change of scenery, to let the whirlwind die down in your mind, to figure out the things that really matter, that's got to be the priority. And when you're sitting in the desk as an employee executing the strategy, you don't get to change what's going to happen because you're wearing a different hat. Okay, third thing, block your time. I referenced this a minute ago in the little chart, but you got to block your time. It is critical to recognize the best time of day for you to do each kind of task. If you can figure this out, I'm working on a content piece for this, but if you can figure this out, it's absolutely, it, it's empowering. I realized a while back that in the morning between about 8 and 10, that is the time when I am innovative and creative. And you know what I did for years? I'd come in, sit at my desk, and what do you think I did? Check your email. And I squandered the best part of the day on knucklehead stuff. When I learned to not look at my email till 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning and spend that high value, highest quality time in my own thought space on the stuff that really matters when I'm the most creative and most innovative, I'm doing design then, I'm building content, I'm doing those sorts of things at that time, revolutionary. Now, it took me forever to figure this out because I'm an idiot, but maybe you figured this out already. But take a hard look at the times of day when you do the best, you know, the certain kinds of work the best. When do you do the innovative strategy stuff? When are you good to figure out detail problems? When should you just be, you know, it's kind of the down part of the day. Or you should just be doing knucklehead stuff like responding to client emails and things like that. Figure that out and you will be able to tame the whirlwind a lot faster because the whirlwind gets a lot smaller because you're more efficient in the moment. Does that make sense? When are you the most energized? Figure that out. 
Also, schedule those emails and phone calls. Schedule them. It is uh, clients, generally speaking, there's one or two clients who pay a lot of money who have access to me at any time. And I'll pick up the phone except for strategy times if they call. They don't call much, but when they do, I answer. The rest of them, we're going to schedule a call. They always get voicemail. They always get voicemail. And we'll call and, and figure out a callback or have an online calendar system or they send in a support ticket or whatever. You're, you are not that necessary sometimes. We have this in our mind. Look, my client needs to have me right now. No, they just need to change an image on a blog post and that can wait till tomorrow. You know, really. I mean, really, right? I need to be spending my time doing something else that's more important to move my business forward. Never, ever check your email first thing in the morning. The whirlwind lives in your email. Okay, last one. This is where I admit the deep hypocrisy in my heart. Uh, taming the whirlwind takes time, so you've got to give yourself a break. There's a great quote that I've found attributed to many people. I think it was G.K. Chesterton who has a lot of great quotes. Uh, the internet says so, so you know, it must be true. Um, Anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. And I love that quote. Anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. It takes time to establish habits. So I mentioned at the very beginning of this talk that I, <laughs> the issue that has kicked my butt more than any for the first quarter of this year is this very issue of strategy and productivity. I, my client, the, the client part of my time spun out of control, completely spun out of control this first quarter. I'm behind on stuff. I'm never behind on stuff. I'm behind on things. There's way too many demands. I'm stressed out. I'm working at night way more than I should. My wife is keeping a tally. Well, I'll have to pay these nights back, um, which is fine. I blew it royally, which I think is just, you know, in Providence, really funny that I gave this talk last weekend in Orange County. I gave it once this week on iThemes training and I'm giving it here today. So three times in one week I'm giving this talk reminding myself you can't, and as a result I've made some strategic changes in my business to deal with that. But my point in telling that story is this. I've been teaching this and coaching this for years and I screwed it up this past quarter. Screwed it up completely. It's easy to do. So give yourself a break, pick yourself up and figure out, okay, I made a mess. What's next? What do I learn from that? How do I do it better next time? It's okay. Anything worth doing, worth doing is worth doing badly at first. So key takeaways. The whirlwind never goes away. It's always going to be there. You can't push off strategy. Delaying strategy doesn't work because when urgency and importance clash, urgency wins every time, so you've got to have the strategy to accomplish your goals in the middle of the whirlwind. Now let me leave it off with this. If you did this, first of all, let me ask this. How many of you think you could execute that strategy? Have a meeting with yourself, pick some goals, spend some time each week, sure. What would happen, what would happen after one quarter, three months in your business of doing that? What would happen? How would your business change if you actually put this process into practice? How would your business change if you did? Would you be more efficient? more effective, more profitable? What would you be able to do that you haven't been able to do yet? What's on your to-do list that needs to be accomplished, that might finally get to be accomplished? And if you did those things, how would your life be different as a result? How would your life change? Would your business maybe stop intruding on what really matters to you? What kind of difference would that make? How much less stress would you have? if you actually started moving your business forward and started to get the whirlwind under control. The concept here is margin. When you let the whirlwind die down in the rest of your world and you start to keep it in those boxes, it creates margin in your life that you get to do with what you want. How are you going to spend it? Spend time more with your family? Spend time on some hobbies for a change. Take a vacation. Maybe spend some time being quiet and reflecting on some things. Maybe spend time on strategy in your business or building out the processes. Whatever it is, it's margin. You get to do with it whatever you want to do with it. And the beauty of WordPress, the beauty of freelancing and owning your own business is you're the boss. You get to decide how, you know, what your priorities are and let your business fuel those priorities. Building margin into your world helps that process. Can you do it? How would your life be different? 
I'd love to hear stories if any of you actually put this into pro uh, process. So thanks. My name is Nathan Ingram. You can find me on iThemes Training and at that link right there. And again, uh, two free one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. If you'd like help getting this process of productivity integrated into your world, talk to the Liquid Web table out here. Uh, there's also a link on that particular page. And uh, Liquid Web is going to pay for two free coaching sessions, 50 minutes long, for us to sit down and, and talk through how to make this thing work or anything else you want to talk about as well as uh, when you become a partner. Uh, we got some time for questions, and otherwise I'll be outside and out here all day tomorrow. Questions? Snide remarks. <laughs> questions. Yes, sir. How do you uh, do your weekends? Do you always take them off, or do you sometimes take, uh, let me take Saturday morning or Sunday afternoon as an extra strategy? Okay, great question. So the question is for the video, how do you handle weekends? Okay, let's do this. Truth time. How many of you work weekends a lot? Yeah, me too. I used to do that a lot. I have not done client work on a weekend since I can remember. Even when I'm on a deadline, weekends belong to family. That's just a priority I set. And you know, your priorities can be different. There's nothing wrong with that, but th those are priorities that I set. And so when I plan, it takes that into account. Now, I will say this, the time each week when I do the planning for the coming week, for me, works best on Sunday night. So Sunday night, you know, after the family's wound down, you know, usually about 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, it's when I take about a half hour and I think through what's coming up this week and I start to put things in boxes. For me, that works. Some people, it works great Friday afternoons or early Monday morning or whatever. Find the time that works for you. But uh, yeah, but so, I mean, I'm taking off from Friday night to Sunday night is my weekend, right? Yes? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so the question is, how would you put a strategy like this in place if you have a full-time gig and you want to move towards freelancing or your own business of some sort? Uh, the first thing I'll say is you got to do that early. If you can train yourself out of the gate to, be, uh, to keep your time walled in, it's better. Now, that being said, you as an employee don't have nearly the control over how you spend your time typically as you would. So the time you do have, you need to structure it. Structure it big time. And I'd love to talk with you more about details later if, if you want to. Yes? Okay. Oh, okay. So after screwing up, how do you recover? Okay. Uh, you got to give yourself a lot of grace, right? And realize that yes, even though I'm supposed to know what I'm talking about in this area, it's okay that I screwed up because it just becomes another fun story to tell and I'll, I get to learn from it, from it, right? So practically speaking, the way I'm recovering from having way too much work is I hired a bunch of people. And it, for me, this, is a, uh, this might eventually turn into a talk, but look, it's, I am by nature a perfectionist, like bad. How many of you are that way? It's my greatest and worst asset. You, you know, your, your greatest strength, or pardon me, your greatest weakness is your greatest strength taken to an extreme. So I have trouble letting go and delegating. Always have, always have. It's awful. It's a terrible sin. I, I, I struggle with it. Uh, I'm finally at the point where I'm like, I can't, can't do it. Got to let it go. I got people I trust. I'm going to bring them in. So in my particular case, the, the, you have to figure out the root of the problem, which was way too much work, which is a good thing, right? I mean, wow, people want to hire me to do the thing. This is great. However, too much work, not great. Being busy is not a badge of honor. Margin is, is a badge of honor. Having discretionary time is a badge of honor. That's what measures success, by the way. Margin should measure success, not that I'm busy. I don't like to be busy. So I brought people in that I trust to help solve the problem. Yeah, it's a great question. Did I answer your question? Okay. Other questions? We have, uh, actually, we're done. Okay, so <laughs> thank you guys very much.